so this is it's, it's kind of a perfect example of the the conservative spirit of Hollywood's big business, the, you know, the, the big kind of money-making end of Hollywood uh, is at the moment in a very conservative era. And if if something works, then they stick to it. And what you, we've seen over the last few years is that Disney has been finessing the perfect release schedule. And last year they cracked it. They started the year with this kind of, uh, like, you know, the movie equivalent of easy listening, this period American uh, true story uh, adventure thing. Uh, it was Million Dollar Arm this year, uh, last year, sorry. And then in, you know, in spring they'll have a, a live action version remake make of a cartoon. They did Cinderella last year. In May, they'll have two blockbusters, one sure thing, probably a Marvel movie, one not, one bit more risky. Midsummer, they have Pixar. In November, they have a prestige animation. And then in December, they have Star Wars. So last year, they nailed that and all of these films did very well. This year, their release schedule is exactly the same. And the film that's falling into the million dollar arm slot is actually the next film by the same director of that movie, Craig Gillespie. Uh, and it's The Finest Hours. And this is a very kind of nostalgic, uh, retro inclined I kind of want to call it a disaster movie, but it's not a disaster movie because it doesn't really feel like during the film that anyone's life is really at risk because it is very sort of cosy and snuggly and 1950s style. And, you know, everyone is kind of very earnest and doing their best. It's about a lifeboat rescue that happened. This is a true story. Uh, it, it happened in 1952. Uh, very little known, but incredibly daring event in which this tiny four-man vessel went off the coast of Cape Cod through these 60-foot waves uh, to help more than 30 sailors that were stranded on an oil tanker that was out in a storm that was so punishing that the actual ship had been snapped in two. And thanks to the quick thinking of uh, the, the ship's engineer, who's played by Casey Affleck, in his second film of the week, he managed to beach the end of the oil tanker that most of the survivors were on, on this kind of shoal out at sea up on the rocks or a sandbank or something like that. And then this four-man rescue crew that's led by Chris Pine has to find its way somehow out in the dark in this tiny vo boat with a broken compass to this wreckage and rescue probably twice as many men as can actually fit on board. Now, this is obviously in the small town is the cause of some anxiety. And Chris Pine's sweetheart, who's played by Holiday Granger, stops by the lifeboat rescue station to try and persuade uh, the captain of the operation, played by Eric Bana, uh, to, to think again about this rescue mission. And here she is doing just that. I hear what everyone's saying. You don't know what you're doing. Excuse me? Maybe, maybe it's because you're not from here. You don't know what it's like out there. What the hell would you know what it's like out there, miss? Hmm? Please just call them back. What do you think it's gonna be like being married to a Coast Guard man? Please just call them back. You gonna come in here scared every time he out in the water? Please call them back. You don't belong here. Please call them back. Get out of here. Get out of my station and go home to where you belong, miss. Please call them back. Get out of my station. Wow. Very earnest, very heartfelt and very nostalgic. Now, you know, this is there's zero bad language in this film. There's next to no gore in the film. It's it, it's it's very much a kind of a sanitized harking back to big studio productions of the 1950s. And that's kind of interesting in its own way. There's, there's no real depth to the story either, but it does go after recreating this true story and doing justice to the braver of these characters. You know, Chris Sounds Pine... Like it's got a bit of a Perfect Storm stuff to it. Yeah, it's actually the same stretch of sea in which the Perfect Storm was set, which is another true story, of course. And this, you know, I won't give away the ending, but it, it, it works out slightly better than it did in, in that situation. And, you know, the ending, of course, is a matter of public record because it's a, this is a this is a, a true story that it's based on i think it, it's carried along perfectly well by, by the cast chris pine is sort of doing a version of his captain kirk persona from the star trek movies you know this kind of all-american hero regrets in his past wants to do the best for his crew holiday granger who plays his sweetheart miriam is you know she does her best to elevate this beyond the sweetheart role there's only so much she can do with it but she does very well casey affleck's actually the big surprise in this as the engineer he's sort of to me, felt like he was channeling on the waterfront era Marlon Brando and that he has the kind of, you know, slick back hair, the, you know, mopping his brow, the vest on, talking, mumbling away to himself, little private smiles to himself and little bits of actually business, like when they're talking about how the ship's going to sink on board the ship. Actually business. Well, he starts peeling a boiled egg while he's talking and kind of is concentrating as much on this boiled egg as he is on talking to the cat. It's just one of these kind of, it's slightly pastiche and slightly trying to do a style of acting that's very out of fashion. But to me, that was quite good fun. I love him. I think he's a great actor. There's, there's no depth to this whatsoever, apart from, you know, nautically speaking. Um, the, the, <laughs> the the wave effects are very persuasive. You know, it actually takes a cue from the Revenant and it splatters the lens with water droplets just to convince you, you know, what you're watching. It's not fully digital. There is some kind of element of risk, although I'm sure it is fully digital. Um, you know, 
as far as for, for what it does, which isn't much, it does it very well. 